Hello everyone and welcome. I hope you're having an awesome day. Today's guitar lesson is just going to be um, a quick reference for you for uh, a couple strum pattern exercises you could do. So hopefully you've gotten to the point where you can play a handful of open chords or um, change between them with relative ease and you're ready to start adding in uh, some strum patterns, basically what you're doing with the right hand. Okay, so uh, Congratulations, first of all, on getting to this point. Um, this is where your guitar playing starts to really sort of sound musical. Um, so up until now, you've probably just been doing simple sort of down strums. So this is a um, strum exercise that um, I have attached to this video, or I printed out for you um, if you're my student here in person. Um, so I'm just gonna go through each one of these with you so you can sort of hear it as a reference. So rhythm and timing is kind of just one of those things that um, just makes a lot more sense when you can hear it. So it's important to learn how to sort of read the music here, and that is helpful because um, sometimes you won't have an auditory reference. But for now, since we're just learning, I thought it would be helpful to kind of go through the, a few of these with you. Um, so we'll start at the top, and you're welcome to sort of follow along with me if you'd like. Um, but feel free also to just sort of watch me play it each pattern and then see if you can just sort of replicate it on your own um, and some of these are harder than others I kind of just came up with a mix of some um, common ones that we end up doing a lot that all involve um, non syncopation or, or where like chord changes and stuff would happen on a beat that can be kind of tricky so none of these are that these are all sort of beginner things um, but with that said, don't be afraid to start slow. If I'm playing in the video a little faster than, than you can do it, that's okay. It's totally fine to start slow and work up to speed. That's really the method for learning how to play just about any instrument, okay? Um, and timing is kind of a weird sort of thing. It's, it's not something you can always just point to and go, see that right there, you missed it, right? Because once you miss something, it's too late, it's gone. It, it was a moment in time and we can't go back and just do it over again. You just have to try and get it on the next one, okay? So I encourage you to get a metronome of some sort or like a drum beat or something to play along with. That's a great way to um, practice. It's also a great way to sort of measure your progress to see if you can um, build speed over time. You'll probably find right around you know 140 or so, it starts to get really difficult to play any of these, it's just too fast. Um, so you practice at a slower speed for a while, and then you come back to it in a week or two and you realize, okay, I can definitely play it at um, 140, 150 even, um, faster and faster. Okay, so let's begin. I'll start with letter A on our worksheet here, which um, as you can see is titled Simple Quarters, and that's probably what you've been doing up until this point. Um, simple quarters just means that um, each measure is divided into fourths or four equal simple down jumps. It really doesn't get any easier than that. Oh, and by the way, for this, I'm going to practice all of these strums just on a G chord. Okay. So if you want to follow along with me, you can play G with me. You can also just do like um, a dead chord or a muted chord where you mute all of the strums or all of the strings. I'm sorry. That's a good way to kind of hear um, the very beginning, the attack of each drum. Um, so especially if you're going fast, that, that's a good one. Um, but you can, when you're practicing this on your own, you can play any chord you'd like. It doesn't really matter. But for now, I'm just gonna play G. Okay. So letter A on G sounds like this. Four simple down drums. You just go one, two, And that's pretty simple. Um, and that's a great way to also practice um, switching between chords to see if you can um, go from one chord to another without stopping that strum, keeping that, that steady, consistent pace um, will really improve your musicality um, when you're making chord changes. Okay, so letter B is straight eighths. It's basically the exact same thing, um, but we're gonna add in up strums. So when you think about it, if I'm doing a bunch of down strums in a row, in order to do multiple down strums, I have to bring my hand back up. Okay? That gives us a chance to strike the strings again. So what I mean is if I'm doing letter A and I go one, two, three, four, 
in between each one of those, my hand has to come back up so I can do another down strum. So imagine that in that moment while my hand is coming back up, I were to strike the strings again on my way up, okay? Now, in the same amount of space and at the exact same speed, I have the ability to play twice as many strums, okay? And that's why we call them uh, eighths is because now instead of a fourth of a measure for each strum, it's an eighth of a measure. So we go, um, and we count those by the way, one and two and three and four and. So the numbers are all of the down strums and the ands are all of the upbeats or the up strums. Okay, so letter B would sound like this. One and two and three and four and. 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 Okay, so on and so forth. That might be a little fast for you, that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, let's just move on. So letter C, ah, now it's starting to sound kind of musical and kind of rhythm, rhythmic, okay? So letter C is a combination of down strums and up strums. And most of the time, that's exactly what we're doing. It's pretty rare that you're playing every single down and up strum like we would be in letter B. It's a good sort of um, warm up or sort of practice, get in the hang of that sort of pendulum motion of our arm, right? Where it's always just sort of going back and forth. Because really, you know, every single exercise, just about every single strum, um, but definitely every single exercise that we're doing here is that same motion with the arm. It's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's just that sometimes we're going to, on purpose, avoid striking the strings, or sometimes on purpose we're going to strike the strings. Okay? It's the combining of the down and the up strums that makes the guitar sound musical. Okay, but we're always doing all four downs and all four ups in between, in every strum, in every pattern, okay? and in pretty much every song. So letter C, as you can see, is down, 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 up, down, or counted one, two, three, and four. Okay, So it's important here to make sure that the up strums are halfway between two down strums. Okay, so what we don't want to do is play letter C like this, where we go down, 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 up, down, right? Where they're all the same length of time, that's not correct, okay? That up strum in between beat three and four is halfway between three and four. It shouldn't be equal in length as beat three or beat four, okay? So what it should sound like is this, one, two, three, and four. As you notice, my hand is still doing that sort of pendulum back and forth where I'm doing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's just making decisions about when, which downs I hit the strings and which ups I don't hit the strings, that kind of thing, is what gives us the different patterns, okay? All right, so moving on, letter D is essentially the same thing, but now we have an up strum between beat one and two, okay, which gives us this. Down, up, down. Pretty simple. Letter E is down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One and two, three and four and one and two, three and four and down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Okay, and you can see in letter D, uh, sorry, letter E is what we're on. So in letter E, the only time I don't hit the strings is in between beat two and three. I don't use that up strum, but you can see that my arm still does that. I still come up, I just avoid the strings on that one beat only. So I'm going down, up, down, and then I come up, but I purposely skip over the strings there. Down, up, 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 down, up. Right, so it's there, and it's accounted for in its time, okay? But I don't actually strike the strings in that moment. Yeah. All right, moving on, letter F. Down, 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 up, down, up. One, two, three, and four, and down, 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 up, down, up. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, that's a good one, very common. We do that a lot, especially in songs that are really fast beat. Okay, 
Okay, so that's a good one. Have fun with that one. Okay, letter G. One and two, three, four and. Ah, kind of a funky one there. One and two, three, four and. One and two, three, four and. Okay, and again, same sort of pendulum. I'm just deciding down strum or up strum. Do I attack the strings or do I not? Or skip over them. All right, letter H. We're nearing the end here. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 down. All right, and finally, letter I. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. So, you've got yourself a handful here of um, beginner sort of strum patterns. Um, you want to go through these slowly, be practicing with the metronome, um, work on changing chords while doing the pattern without any kind of pause or gap between chord changes. Okay, so maybe um, take a simple one like, um, uh, like C, right, and see if you can do um, one time through the pattern on one chord and then one time through the pattern on another chord. For example, like this. One, two, three, and four. 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 And it could be whatever chords you'd like, but the idea is to go from one chord to the next without stopping that strum or having any kind of a pause or a gap. It's very difficult in the beginning. Okay, so start slow. Give yourself some time to transition with your left hand in between strums of the right hand. Okay, and this sort of um, coordinated timing between the two hands is um, what makes it difficult in the beginning. But once you get the hang of it, um, you really don't even have to think about it too much anymore. Your hands will just sort of do it. They'll be very used to working in between the motions of each other in that way. Okay. All right, so have fun with these. And when you get a handle on this, we'll start working on some more complicated um, patterns that are longer, two or three or four measures long of a pattern, and some where we take out the down strums. You'll notice that in each one of these, we always have all four down strums. Okay, it's really just about whether we mix in particular up strums in between those down strums. And that's kind of what makes these beginner um, strum patterns. They're very common, and so it's imperative that you learn them and learn them well. Okay. But eventually, you're going to want to move on to music that has um, sort of a groovier, funner dance kind of vibe, which usually comes from removing some of the down strums. We still do them with our arm, but we don't strike the strings. Okay, A really common example of that would be like a strum like this, where we go down, down, up, up, down, up, down, 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 up. And you can see beat three is missing. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and, right? It's there. We're doing it with our arm but it's a down strum that we purposely avoid the strings so that we can do two ups in a row. Okay, and that's kind of what gives the guitar that sort of jingle jingle bouncy sound. It's the difference between starting a strum with the lower notes on the bottom of the chord or starting the strum with the higher notes on the top of the chord, right? That sort of back and forth motion is what makes music sort of kind of have that bounce and makes you want to bomb your head and you're like, yeah, right? And the timing that we put things in um, is super important. Okay, so really focus on getting the right length of time for each strum and the spacing between everything. And don't obsess over every little detail, just have fun with it. You could even practice um, you know, just strumming with just your hand. You don't even need your guitar or your instrument to necessarily um, get a lot of use out of practicing these. Um, you could even just take your paperwork with you, whatever, and you have a moment to just sit down and you're bored. You could even bring a pick with you and just practice on your thumb. All right back and forth, down and up, or in the seam of your pants. I used to do that all the time. Okay, so just have fun with it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to help. And all right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.